Thank you. In brightest day, yeah. in blackest night. Yeah. It's going to light it up in movie theaters, but Green Lantern today is going to light it up right here in San Diego. Yeah. I've been hearing a lot about uh, people talking about Hollywood taking over Comic-Con. It seems to me, though, that it might be the other way around. I think Comic-Con's taking yeah. over Hollywood. Yeah. And I think comics are taking over Hollywood. Uh, if you look at the history of Green Lantern, we have great creators like uh, Martin O'Dell, we have uh, Bill Finger, Gil Kane, Neil Adams, and the next person that's going to walk out on the stage. Let's hear it for Jeff Johns. <laughs> Jeff, welcome. Thanks. Hey, Ron. Uh, you good? Oh, that's uh, right. Super, super psyched. This is the first Green Lantern movie panel in history. Which is pretty awesome. Um, film looks great. Yeah, you all. Uh, I was down in New Orleans and I saw some of the footage or saw some of the work being done. You were telling me the other day it's uh, it was one of the best weeks of your life as being on the set. Tell the, the fans a little the, bit about the that. The best week of my life. Um, I think everybody here wants to see a Green Lantern movie um, as much as I do. Yeah. So Jeff, I didn't mention before, uh, you're the uh, the chief. Um, what is Chief Creative Officer now, DC Entertainment, yep. and, uh, and guiding projects through Hollywood. Uh, it must be very exciting for you to see this one going first, since, uh, uh, as we can see from your shirt and your hat, and, and your career at Green Lantern means a lot to you. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome to see filmmakers and cast so dedicated to Green Lantern. Uh, the screenwriter and producer of Green Lantern. And here comes Donald DeLine, the producer of Green Lantern. He brought us Zorro back in a new way, he brought us James Bond back in a new way, now he's bringing us Green Lantern director Martin Campbell. We have some cast members here for you today. Let's start with the evil genius of Hector Hammond, Peter Sarsgaard. You can't have green without yellow, even it won't be in this movie yellow, but you have to have Sinestro. Mark Strong. As Carol Ferris in the movie, Blake Lively. And the man with the ring, Ryan Reynolds. Let's get right to it. I want to save time at the end for questions from the audience. You know, Ryan, uh, one of the things that uh, you were telling me about before is that you turned to uh, people like uh, Harrison Ford and Han Solo and, and Chuck Yeager to help sort of frame where uh, the compass points for this character. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that? Y yeah, you know, uh, admittedly, going into to this project, I didn't know uh, as much about it as some people around here. Uh, but um, I, you know, I met with with Martin Campbell, and 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 this is a guy that that you know has such a high standard for those around him, and not least of which himself, and and uh, and and that's what I, I initially fell in love with. But then I, I got I dealt further, and I learned more and more about this character, and he felt like this kind of uh, amalgamation between Chuck Yeager and, and Han Solo, and he felt like this classic hero, something that I hadn't seen in a long time on film, a character who can, you know for lack of a more eloquent way to describe him, he could throw a punch, tell a joke, and kiss a girl. And that was really exciting to me, and I, and, and I just, I, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out, you know, who wouldn't want to play that for, for, for a movie, let alone maybe two or three. So. Outstanding. You know, uh, and Blake, looking out on this crowd, I think you can tell the passion that uh, this property and, and a lot of the DC Comics properties stir in people. It must be interesting to, to step into this. It must oh be a... Oh my gosh, it's incredible. I actually came to Comic-Con a few years ago and got to walk through the crowd and take pictures with everyone. Uh, I'm excited to go to the Harry Potter panel next. <laughs> And then, uh, Peter, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, is, is bundled into the, the fabric of this story and, and this franchise is, is things like fear and will and courage. Um, it, it makes and large it... heads. What's that? Large heads. And large, large heads, yes. Tell That's us about your large cast. 
Tell us about that. About the large head. Yeah, we'll start with that. I'm a size 60. If you guys know hat sizes, that's pretty big. Um, I don't know, I didn't really realize I was going to have a large head until I had one on me. Um, it was just an incredible thing to do. I mean, being in the kind of makeup that I was in in this film and, you know, it's a whole other kind of acting. It really opens up all sorts of things that you never thought you would catch yourself doing, you know? And uh, it's a total blast. I had more fun doing this movie than I really have had in a very, very long time. And you're, of course, talking about uh, Hector Hammond's cranium actually physically gets bigger as the movie goes on. How, how big does it get? It's pretty big. <laughs> pretty big, people. I mean, not like, you know, that, but big. Heavy. Very heavy. And then, Mark, you know, uh, in this movie, you have uh, a character who's going to go in different directions down the line. Uh, in this film, it's, uh, he's got a slightly different role. Do you plan ahead? Do you have to try to hardwire in the future stuff into the movie now, or you kind of play it in the moment? No, I think you have to, um, you take what you're given in the moment. I think if, uh, whatever happens to him further down the line, I think uh, if you know that, Secret Origins comics. His, his job is to be Hal's mentor and put him through his paces and um, he kind of earns his grudging respect by the end of the movie. Um, whatever happens later, that's later. Remember I told you you were going to feel like Bono when you walked out in front of yeah, the Yeah, it's a wonderful think? theme. Thank you very much for the reception. Thank you very much. So do you. <laughs> So Martin, the, uh, the, the essential question right off the bat with a film like this is tone. Uh, what can you tell us about the tone of the film? Uh, well, the tone of the movie is, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's light, it has a lot of humor, but also I think the relationships between all the characters are very real. Um, we've tried to keep the action also very real. And uh, um, tonally, I think there's a lot of humor. Uh, clearly with Ryan Reynolds and with Blake and so forth, um, uh, that's uh, very apparent. And um, no, it's a terrific, it's just a uh, terrific entertainment, I think. And uh, it's my first superhero movie. I've never done one before, unless you count James Bond as a superhero. But he's nothing like Green, he's nothing like Green Lantern, that's all I can say. Um, and uh, particularly a particular superhero that goes to uh, another world, the world of Oa, I'm sure all of you know <clears throat> more than I do about it. But uh, anyway, it's a, um, totally, I think it's great fun, but I also think it's a terrific adventure as well. It's a warm place. I mean, it's tough, it's tough to shoot some of the action scenes outside. I mean, it's, uh, uh, but, you know, to be down there in Louisiana, you know, it's been such a, you know, a state that's been pretty embattled as of late. It's, it's actually fantastic to be there. And, to be bringing this kind of attention to that place. And, uh, uh, I, I think there's nobody here that, that would disagree with that, but uh, uh, they've been so welcoming to, for us there. And, um, um, you know, it's just been an amazing experience. We have about three weeks of, of shooting left to go uh, down there. So, you know, God willing, we'll get through it. Yeah. You know, I know on the home front, uh, your wife is a Marvel character. And I, I think uh, we're all wondering, does that cause any sort of domestic strife or ter tension? <laughs> Uh, we've had some strongly worded dinners. Um, no, it's it, yeah, yeah. I said this before, but we've probably got a lot more comic books lying around than your average married couple. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that's for sure. But maybe not, not this in this room. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He does hands down. Yeah. For you and this this film, uh, what are some of the? How would you frame her as a person? Uh, well, Carol Ferris, she's um, such an exciting woman to play because um, oftentimes. The man is, is saving the woman, but uh, she gets to save Hal a few times. And you know, they're, they're a bit of rivals. Um, you know, they, they have this this past, this love, but they also, um, you know, they're competitors. So to, to be able to, to spar, um, you know, just like verbally, and then also to be shooting these scenes where we're in these fighter pilot planes, I mean, that was pretty cool. I was so excited. I felt like I was going to be the coolest aunt ever. That was the best part of getting this job. It's calling my nephews. And, you know, this, this film is so unique in that, you know, there's something that you can actually do in real life, like pilot a plane that these young boys or whoever can look up to, but then you also see them 
in outer space, you know, flying around. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's just been a wonderful project to be a part of and feel to be a, a strong woman who then becomes a villain later. I can't wait to kick his butt. <laughs> <laughs> And at that point, uh, the tables had turned entirely, and I was begging him for this job. And uh, at first, I sort of, you know, I guess arrogantly thought, oh, I'll just go in there, and if they want me for it, I'll consider it. But I, what I didn't realize is that they had every intention of, of, of making me work for it in every way, shape, and form. I, I screen tested a couple of times, and I'm glad I did, because, you know, I, I want to be as right for this character as they do, and, and um, I want to make sure it's a good fit. And I think what what really pushed it all over the edge for me was I saw this guy who sort of is seemingly arrogant and cocky right off the bat in the film and how he's given this extraordinary gift which in turn is incredibly humbling for him and I thought that that was a really interesting arc for a character and particularly in a superhero film. Uh, uh, there's always a possibility for everything but Green Lantern is um, I think Green Lantern is uh, the, the scope of Green Lantern the success of Green Lantern will, uh, uh, will really lead the charge for everything DC does. I'd go with a Wookiee because I'd like to be cute and dangerous. <laughs>
Wednesday, Blackest Night.